So yeah, we are finishing up part five. This is like the last section of part five. It's about minor piece end games, which we've looked at some simpler minor piece end games in earlier parts. But uh, yeah, these will be a slightly more complex, I suppose. We'll take our first tentative steps into the world of minor piece end games. Or, or we already did take those steps in the last part, he That's says. That's true. Uh, he, he is going to continue to introduce the basic end games positions that involve bishops and knights. Um, we'll ingest a bit more about bishops of opposite color. We'll tackle very basic two pawns versus one on the same side of the board. And we'll even address two bishops versus a lone king, which is far easier than you might imagine. Let's do that first. So two bishops against a lone king. Um, let's put the first. Yeah, I yeah. there's a drill on chess.com for this. Yeah. And I and I I had to practice to be able to do it, and it's been a while. I've um, never been taught this, but mm -hmm. you know I have uh, I've done it like yeah. in a drill like that, but I just did it without too much trouble. Yeah, I could see that you would be able to. I'm just saying for me, I had to really. Um, Practice it a bit. All right, I don't know any technique, so you know I'll learn yeah. something about it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they're different. You played this out in a tournament game exactly once, hmm. said Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I need to practice it again because I remember that it was um, it wasn't easy for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kept letting the king out. Two bishops and a king versus a lone king, says MG Weirda. <laughs> yeah, like the instruction I saw, and we'll see That's what true. Silman says. It's like you had, you know, obviously, like, usually you have to get him to the side of the board, and then you have to use your king. You have to keep taking a square away and get him up to the corner. Mm -hmm. But That sounds right. You know. That's what Scottish Demon Goat's saying. Oh. In so many words. Yeah. So he goes, some of you might be wondering when I'm going to teach you about bishop and knight versus king. Never. He says. The crowd demands it, though. Right. I will. Spencer will. Right. <laughs> he said he only had this position once in his whole career. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, his friend John Watson never had it. And it's not very easy to learn. And mastering it will take a significant chunk of time. Hang on one second. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to sneeze on you. Emergency sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, anyways, when I teach you, it's obviously, it's not like you're going to be able to do it every time once you see yeah. me show you how to I do it. To, for the lower level person, you have to practice these type things and think about it. I get that. Is bishop a knight before or after three knights? Three knights isn't a thing. That's not, that never ever happens. <laughs> So come on. That's just something that Ben does. Yeah, that's just like for fun in a in a John Nunn book he, he put it, you know. That's about it. So in general, every position in this book will happen fairly often, or at least understanding it will allow you to solve other positions with similar themes. But he doesn't feel that bishop and knight will uh, fall into that category. And two bishops is also pretty rare. Uh, but there are some, there are three reasons that he puts it in the book. One is uh, he, he finds it useful uh, that, that you need to use all three of your pieces in a balanced effort. He finds that to be instructive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although you could say the same thing about bishop and knight. Yeah, that's uh, true. Seeing how powerful two bishops are working together can be enlightening. The power of the bishop pair. And it's very easy to learn and only involves a small expenditure of time to fully understand as opposed to a bishop and knight mate that's, all right that's funny mg weirdo says three nights happens all the time on this other string i watch <laughs> <laughs> yeah the keys to this end game use the bishops to cut off two connected diagonals at the same time trapping the enemy king in one sector of the board uh, the bishops will be able to take away other important squares while also making whole diagonals impassable you will need your own king to win, so bring it up uh, so it can challenge your, its counterpart. Bit by bit, shrinking the diagonal box uh, in much the same way we shrink the box uh, in a, with a rook versus king or a queen versus king. You will need to chase the defending king into the corner, and then you'll easily deliver mate. All right, so let's see from this position how, how we can get it going. Check. This is what he suggests in this position. See, this is what he wants. He wants the 
bishops mm-hmm. on adjacent diagonals. Right, yeah. And in this way, the king is going to be trapped. Whichever way it goes, obviously you should stay in the center because it's the toughest to mate if you're in the center. But yeah, now you're, you're already getting ready to shrink that box. King b7. The king heads for the embattled area. <laughs> Thought you guys would like that. Mm-hmm. All right. He attacks the bishop, but we saw it. Watch out. Don't fall asleep and let him take one of your bishops. That's true. That would be quite embarrassing. <laughs> Bishop f4. So see, we made kind of a wall here. And we're shrinking that box, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to see. I mean, he's only got two legal moves now. Uh, Let's see, he plays king c4. Yeah, king c3 would allow us to step up. So king c4 makes more sense, definitely. And then look, now we can go on this diagonal. So now we shifted from this diagonal to this one thereby shrinking his territory even more. King b4, bishop g8. See, there we go. Mm -hmm. Shrinking from this side to the other, this diagonal to the other, and thereby uh, cutting off even more real estate. Oh, Indo's in here. Hey, Indo Queen, how's it going? I love when I look look over at the chat and it's Indo Queen. Yeah, and I (laughs) saw Jen popped in too. Hey, Jen. Next, we'll learn how to mate with one bishop. <laughs> hey, one. <laughs> Not quite. All right, so bishop g8, king a3. Now, again, you don't want to make a move like that because then you're letting him out of the box, right? Right. It's not really a box because it's sort of diagonal, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same concept. Also, you got to be careful about stalemate here. Right. If you go here, that's stalemate. Yeah, yeah. So king c5. Now he's only got one legal move. All right, yeah, then we just keep taking away squares, right? Can't go there. Take away that square. Mm -hmm. Little opposition. King a7. I mean, if he goes here, we'll check him. Right. And he'll have to go there. And bishop e5. So he's not even going to let him over this way. Yeah. King a6. And bishop c7. Nice. So this is a really nice setup. Mm-hmm. The The king is cutting off these squares. The bishop's cutting off that one. And this bishop's cutting off, well, the same bishop's cutting off this square. So now he's totally entombed on these three squares. Mm-hmm. Getting them pretty good now. Here, cut off another square now. Bishop c4. Bishop e5. Having done its job, the dark square bishop now puts some checking distance between it and the black's king. You don't want to go stalemate here. Stalemate. Only you can make two moves in a row, then that would be pretty easy. Mm hmm. So bishop e5, king c7, again we're just making sure he's stuck here, and this is the best square for the king for mate. Now all we have to do is make a waiting move, like that, Mm -hmm. and that's going to be mate, check, and mate. Remember, watch out for stalemates. Oh, that is a good idea to watch out for stalemates. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to mate with two bishops. Um, you, you, it doesn't require too much technique. You just take away those squares, force them into the corner, watch out for stalemates. And, uh, yeah, you can do like he did. A lot of times you have to make a waiting move like we saw with bishop f4. But basically this is the square you want your king on, right, when it's a knight hop away. Mm-hmm. This way the king can guard those squares. One of the bishops can guard the other square. And then the last bishop is mating. Right. But yeah, there are 100,000 ways to go about it. You know, this is just one example. Mm-hmm. What rating is spec? You mean Spencer? <laughs> My USCF mm-hmm. rating is uh, 2,200. Hey, hey, SJP101. 
I don't think I've seen you here before, but unless I forgot. But welcome. Guy doesn't even know my name. <laughs> hey, 824M. <laughs> All right, so that's it for a two bishops mate. Let's go on to the next section Definitely. here. Definitely. Bishops of opposite color, two pawns down and loving it. In part four, we saw that a one pawn advantage is often not enough to guarantee victory. And even at times two pawns with no other pawns on the board isn't enough to win uh, if there's only one file between them. The reason white's king and bishop can team up to blockade both pawns. Shouldn't say black's king and bishop. Whoa, thank you, VTG978, nice, for all five those subs. subs. Yay, thank you. Didn't mean to interrupt you, but I got very excited. Yay, thank you. Oh, yay. Thank you, Cy Bradbury. Bradbury. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> now, what? This is going to be opposite color bishops. Hey, Q Hen, how's it going? Haven't seen you in. in at least two or three weeks. Saw you on a different stream. White to move. <laughs> All right. No, you, hang on. No user, you never make anybody feel bad. So take care. I'm sorry you have to go so soon. Is it late there or something? But see you. It's always good to see you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kuhin. 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 I see him on uh, chess coaches stream sometimes. Hey, Basta. Maybe we can look at it. Let us finish through some, get through some material, and then if we have time at the end, then I'm happy. Thank you, Cy Bradbury, for those 200 centidues. And Bridget. White to move is a draw. Here's a rule. Bishops of opposite colors, two pawns versus none, where the pawns only one file apart, is often a draw since the defending king and bishop can combine their powers to stop the pawns in its tracks. Oh, trying not to learn with three bits. Yay, thank you for the three bits. I just apologize, you're going to kill me. I got distracted by the noise, which I'm happy about the noise. Can you just say it again? <laughs> Sorry. Bishops of opposite colors, two yes. pawns versus none, two. with the pawns only one file apart, is one off in apart. a draw. All right, one file apart. Okay. Since the defending king and bishop can blockade. Okay. White to move draws. All right, so let's see. Let's make sure that the move is correct. Yep, king g6. Mm-hmm. Taking control over f7, this is important because it's a white square. And getting out of the way of the f pawn. Bishop a2. Doing nothing, never play f6. And then here's king e8. Now we can see why one file between the pawns isn't enough. Black's king can stop d7 and protect f7, less creating a blockade. White can win the bishop by playing d7 check, takes, and then f7, forcing you to sack the bishop, but then you only have a bishop left. You can't mate with just one bishop. Mm -hmm. so, but so if other pawns were on the board, then white can try to win. Oh, Cy Bradbury gifting five subs. I saw that. I was just trying to interrupt awesome. you again. <laughs> thank you, Cy Bradbury. Yay. Thank you so much. And thank you, Bridget, too. So, yeah, if we put more pawns on the board, and this is usually the case for most endgames, more pawns on the board is more winning chances. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever worse or losing an endgame, you want to trade the pawns off because we can get a scenario like this where, sure, you can win material, but you won't have any pawns left. It's a draw. Right. King and bishop against king. <laughs> yeah, the subs are rolling in. Yeah, it was funny because Hank's mate in one said, I think he's the one that said, I can easily I could easily lose this. I sort of feel that <laughs> way, too. <laughs> Definitely got to know what you're doing. No, you can't lose this now. Well, I... Oh, you can't. You just go here. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just saying, like... It's if, impossible He lose. just means not in this exact position, but if he had to get his bishop coordinated properly. Mm-hmm. They, you know, right. Well, yeah, this is like the simplest position. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, you got to know what to do. Yay. All right, so he gives some uh, more moves. But as we'll see, he's not going to have much to do. We could even see he's trying to like do this, which maybe we can just wait for that and go here. But we can also just go like that. Mm -hmm. And then he can't go there. He needs a king here and another king over here to help. Then he could try to <laughs> outdo mm. you. But the king is too slow to be doing all that. He's only one king. White isn't getting anywhere. So, draw agreed. 
Now let's look at a very similar position. Let's see. Just move some stuff around a bit. No, you're not stupid, Indo Queen. I mean, a stalemate is just one one type of draw. Right. And so it's not a stalemate, on, you know, in that scenario, that position. That would be insufficient mating material. Yeah, they would. That, that's, if, the, that's what the, that kind of draw is. If they played it out to the end, there would just be a bishop left. Mm -hmm. King and bishop versus king, the game just ends mm -hmm. immediately. Draw. Insufficient mating material. So, in this position, with an extra pawn for each side, this is going to be a win. White to move wins. We can now play as we did in the previous example, but the addition of the B pawns is enough to win, as we'll see. Well, that's all the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that all looks the same. Yeah, we were looking at it was this position with no pawns here, but right. now we can win the bishop. Check. The only way to stop the queen is by taking it, but now you're going to lose, obviously, because I have an extra pawn left. Right. Yeah, he plays it out a little bit more, just for posterity's sake, I guess. <laughs> could do some shouldering here. Oh, you can't even go here, because that's illegal. But we can still do some shouldering. Now, careful, don't stalemate. Oh, yeah. Careful about stalemate. Still, don't go, don't go stalemate in my heart <laughs> here. And then takes. And okay, yeah. now we could win this for sure. Hey, Hein Superman. Hey, Crocodile Style. Yeah, gotta watch out for those stalemates. Gotta always be watching. Mm -hmm. You can't ever take it easy in a chess game until your opponent resigns. Or draw agreed. <laughs> or you resign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're starting to think you're at a disadvantage because you keep missing the Spencer lessons. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is more Silman's lessons than mine, but well, I'll take credit. <laughs> driving the train. As we've seen, a two-pawn advantage with the pawns only being a file apart isn't always decisive. However, when the pawns are two or more files from each other, the stronger side's winning chances go way up. Uh, there are many cases of white's winning, white winning when the pawns are two files apart, but the defender does have drawing chances if his bishop can freeze both pawns at the same time. Let's look at this next diagram. So here they're going to be further apart pawns, which gives more winning chances generally. Okay. Yeah, this is that's right. Silman translated by Spencer. Just tough. It's like an ancient text. Like a pathologist, <laughs> right? That's what we learned that the Hubner was. Pathologist. That's right. I forgot how you pronounce it. Yeah, that it. sounds kind of right almost. Almost, almost got it. All right, so here the pawns are further apart, mm -hmm. and that's good for our winning chances. However, black's bishop is freezing the pawns, so that makes it a little tougher. Mm -hmm. In this diagram, in this position, it's clear that neither pawn is going anywhere without help of its king. Uh, king d4 threatening uh, e4 is stymied by king f5. King e4, king f, king d4, king f5 stops e4. And for example, he, he gives this variation, but you can just go back, and the king's not actually uh, making progress here. So white comes up with the idea to bring the king over to a6, and then we can push that way. Let's see how that works out. Oh, here's a rule: bishops of opposite colors, two pawns are to none, pawns two files apart. When the bishop on one diagonal can stop both pawns from advancing at the same time, and when the defending king can work with its bishop to retain control over the key advanced squares, the game will often be a draw. So he's saying that if the bishop is on one diagonal to stop both pawns, and the king can help stop both pawns, it's a draw. Okay. But a lot of times this isn't the case. Like, let's say the pawn is already here, and so you have to control this square and that square, that's not on one diagonal, that's right. two different diagonals. Okay. So your bishop you know, might get overworked, which I'm sure he'll show in a different example. So uh, here, however, this is the case where we can draw it. 
even though they're far apart, they're more than they're two files apart. King b5. We need the king's help to stop b7, like this. Okay, that's good enough. Now black has stopped both pawns again, and any bishop move by white will be met by a back and forth bishop move by black. This is important, you have to play king e6 here. Because you have to stop him from playing e4. He's threatening king d4. Threatening e4. Okay. So you have to play king e6 to meet king d4 with king e5. Oh, I see, yeah. <clears throat> he just randomly throws in those moves just for fun, he says. And yeah. Now, as we already saw this idea, and white can again try to go over here, but then we'll be in time to stop him there before he gets to push. And then he can run back, but we're in time to stop him here before he can push. Okay. So that's, that's the key point. If white was allowed to push either of these pawns, he could win. But since he can't because of that, and we're staying on one diagonal, it's an easy draw. There's nothing else that white can even try here to win. <clears throat> yeah, because the king has to help. In both scenarios, just right. back and forth. So and like, luckily, the kings yeah. run at the same speed. Yeah. So if he runs over here, we can run. Uh, we can run over here at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So what allowed Black to draw this position? Here are the key defensive elements. Both pawns can only advance to light squares, so White's bishop wasn't able to take part in the fight to move forward, because it's a dark square bishop. Black's bishop covered the squares in front of both pawns at the same time. Black's king was able to shadow white's king whenever it moved to the aid of either pawn. The blockading combination of black's king and bishop is enough to stop any progress from white. Yes. Here's a rule. As you might imagine, three or more files separating the pawns, as long as one of the pawns isn't a, a wrong colored rook pawn, is usually decisive, since the defending king can't help the advance of both pawns. Let's show an example of that. Okay. And you remember about wrong colored rook pawns from our first example of, of minor piece end games. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got uh, another bits, another amount of bits. 500 bits. Yay. Thank you, Cy Bradbury, for 500. You're just on a roll today. Butter them up. <laughs> Here, there. Okay. Well, the thing is, Cy Bradbury, you can also go back and review the streams, which I hope to do. I've done a little bit of to try to reinforce it if you don't get something. <clears throat> so here, the pawns are even further apart, three files apart, and that's better. Also, there's no rook pawn, which is nice. So all of that is increasing our winning chances. Bishop d5. White's not in any hurry, so he frees the e4 square for his king. He could play e4, then he could play f4 after king e4. King b8. King c4. Why not king d4? Hmm. Maybe the chat would know. Or Karen. Um, c4 instead of d4? Yeah, why didn't he play king d4? Um... Oh, you can get checked. Bishop e5 check? Um, well, then just king takes e5. I know you didn't mean bishop e5 check. <laughs> no, I'm um, bishop f2. Yeah, bishop f2. Then, yeah. And then? Let's see if you did that. Well, but then the pawn can, I guess you'll just move. If you just, well, if you move, if you don't go back, um, then you'll lose that pawn. Either way, you'll lose the pawn. There's no way to defend it. Hey, sarcastic guillotine. What if they go um, king b, f oh yeah, they can't do that. Cause they're already, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this loses the pawn. Yeah. That's why. 
So you gotta watch out for little tactics all the time. Mm -hmm. King c4. Now he can force our pawn forward. And then, okay, we got the scenario that's good for the defender. The bishop's controlling both the, the, the squares in front of the pawns uh, on the same diagonal. But the problem is the king is too far away. The king can't come over here to stop this and then go back over here to stop this king from helping both the pawns. It's too far away. Right, I see that. <clears throat> so yeah, now the king can come over. Here. And there. King f5. It's getting ready to push the pawn. There it is. King e7. So he's trying his best. He's definitely trying his best here. King g5, bishop c7, f5, bishop e5, king g6. And now black is in Zugzwang. This is the problem with having to defend two squares that aren't on the same diagonal. Right. The bishop has to control both. And, uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't even say this is Zugzwang because if it was white's turn, you'd still just go here. Or you can't take because I queen. Right, yeah. So this isn't a great example. But you can imagine, like, let's say everything was pushed back. You know, everything was pushed back where the bishop was controlling this and that. Mm -hmm. Then, and this was here. Then it could be where if it wasn't if black didn't have to move maybe it's a draw, but you have to move and you have to let one of my pawns forward. Here it doesn't matter because I can always check and force you away or force my pawn forward. But this is a scenario that you have to watch out for when you're defending. You don't want to make it so your bishop is sort of stuck doing both things, and now it's it's a zugzwang potential at least. Right. Hey, sarcastic guillotine and GM, no chance ever. I'm a new. Why not leave bishop e4, move pawn to c7, and then chase bishop until I... Move pawn to b7, he meant. Uh -huh. Then chase bishop until opportunity to break. So the idea to, to win this is that you're going to have to use both pawns. Um, so he did put his pawn on b7, and now he's going to try to push this pawn too. You're going to have to try to push both your pawns to win it. And this is how you do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to win without pushing both of your pawns. Right. There's just no way. Oh, yeah, you meant B. Okay. Bishop overworked, I guess, here. So it's yeah. Pawn. Okay. Check. <clears throat> and now the win is pretty straightforward. Followed by queen and wins. Um, so, oh, yes? Well, he has a sarcastic guillotine. Hey, Pam. Hey, Pam. Says something. When the black king was close and ready to the pawn, couldn't the bishop sack get rid of the other pawn? Um, well, no, because... If you sack the bishop, then I'll queen this pawn. So you can't sacrifice your bishop ever when my pawn's in the seventh rank about to queen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, like here, for example, you know, you, you can't play takes and takes. You don't have time to stop. Well, even if you could stop my pawn, I keep it because it's protected. So, that, and that's why if it's a wrong colored rook pawn, that is a, a, a defense. Like, let's say it was this pawn, and then, and then you could sacrifice your bishop for that pawn, and that'll be a draw. But with no wrong colored rook pawn, you can't sacrifice the bishop for one pawn. You'll always lose in that case. Right, yeah, you can sack for a stalemate, hope, but okay. <laughs> Probably they won't stalemate. When the black king was on the square close to the promoting. Okay, but like I said, if you if I go here and you take, you lose that. That's losing because that's not a rook pawn. You're always going to lose that position. You know? Like, let's say I just went here, although I think that's the best move, and you took. You're, this is a loss, of course. I'm just going to easily win this position with white. No, my pawn's defended. Yeah. up there. 
Right, I'll just win it like a king and pawn end game. You know, I'll just win it like a king and pawn end game. Just instead of stalemating you, I'll move my bishop. Like, I'll put my king here, your king will be there. And instead of stalemate, I'll move my bishop, and then you'll step up. Actually, I shouldn't go there because I could stalemate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I'll go to a2 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you'll move your king up, I'll move my king up, and then you'll play king a6, and I'll, I'll win. Yeah. So, yeah, this you can never sacrifice for just one pawn unless it's an opposite-colored rook pawn. You know, and, and the black king is over there, and that's defended. Then that'll draw. That's the wrong color rook pawn situation that you have to be concerned about. Absolutely. Cookie Monster says, but why then did black king park on b8? Well, he didn't want to let the guy queen. I mean, the king sort of started here. So, yeah, I mean, maybe the king earlier before this position happened, even though this position probably didn't happen, uh, maybe it should have moved up, but... Even still, white can try to push both the pawns and, and win that way. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing you could do when they're too far apart. Is That's the whole point, is that my king will push, my king will help one of the pawns move forward. And then when they're both on the seventh rank, we already saw how, how he's going to win that. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. <clears throat> is that Ben Feingold Jr.? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> As usual in Bishop Endgames, watch out for the wrong colored rook pawn trick. Oh, I just said that. So the only time black can draw split pawns that are three or more files apart is when one of them is the rook pawn. Hey, this is just what we were talking about. This is exactly what we were talking about. Like this. So, yeah, as, as I was mentioning, this is the wrong colored rook pawn here. That's a white square, and that's a dark square bishop. So that's the wrong color. So here black can draw this by sacrificing the bishop for the pawn. Oh, a donation from Hoin Superman. Yay, thank you, Hoin Superman. Almost $10. Yay. <laughs> 999 <laughs> All right, so in this position with white to play, though it doesn't matter, I think, black draws by rushing his king over to b7 and allowing white to win a piece for the g-pawn. So we'll just let you queen, and my king will go over here to b7. Oh, yeah. You got it. Divide and conquer. And we have a classic bishop and rook pawn of wrong color for the draw. So in a nutshell, when one side is uh, is two pawns up in a bishops of opposite color endgame, here are some rules to remember. Positions where the pawns are separated by one file are often a draw, since the defending bishop and king are close enough to work together to create a blockade. That was the first example we saw. Mm -hmm. Positions where the pawns are separated by two files offers some drawing chances if the b defending bishop eyes the advancing squares of both pawns at the same time on the same diagonal. Right, okay. Like how we saw. Positions where the pawns are separated by three or more files uh, offer fewer defensive chances. Uh, but if it's a wrong colored rook pawn, then it probably is a draw. Okay. Like how we saw here. <clears throat> All right, those are good rules. Yeah, so that's it for this uh, this part five. We finished up part five. This was all for the minor piece endgame, so it was just bishops. No talking about knights this time. <laughs> just bishop talk. Yeah. Let's see what part six holds for us. Endgames for class A players. This will mm -hmm. be pretty good even for me, I think. Yeah, maybe we should just forge ahead then. I think we have time. Is that all right? Is that what you're do we're doing? Oh, if you want to. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we could also do some puzzles from the book. Um... Yeah. If you wanted to get some puzzles going. I think we could you know, go on until 7.30, so that's probably enough time to get started. I didn't know Bridget was from the States, or maybe I forgot that. <laughs> oh, you're leaving, Pam? Bye, Pam. All right, bye. Hey, enjoy dinner. Um, bon appetit. <laughs> All right, yeah, we can, look at, uh, we can look at this part then if you want. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, if you, I think we could. Sure, why not? Yeah. We'll start, yeah, okay, so this is for Class A players. We'll look at some... King and pawn endgames, some more rook and pawn, and minor piece, and uh, queen endgames. Oh, she's from Kansas? Yeah, this is about to get hard. <laughs> That's all right, though. Uh, all right. Let's see. Believe it or not, if you completely master everything through part six, you have an understanding of endgame basics that far surpasses 
of those in the expert category. This is part six. So soon we'll know more than experts know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, then 75% of experts. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know it all. Maybe. Most of it. Perhaps. Uh, so you should already be well-versed in King and Pawn endgame basics, and now it's time to learn a new idea or two. Prepare you for the more expansive, complicated examples in the next part, mm-hmm. part seven. Hope everybody can hear well. Let me move this over a little bit. They're usually pretty loud. I try my best. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not loud enough. That's true. Oh, good night, George. I know it's late where you are. What are Class A players? Says Scottish Demon Goat. Is that 1900? 18, 18 and nineteen hundreds. Okay. Just under two thousand. Okay, so yeah. eighteen hundred to nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember exactly. That's that's how they party. Like it's nineteen ninety nine. All right. This this section is called strange races. Many king and pawn endgames are decided by simple races, that center on whose pawn promotes first. When one side queens and the others can't, it's usually game over. When both sides promote, it's usually a draw. But there are some exceptions. Here are some uh, race exceptions that we must know. Useful advice. Pawn mates are something you must be familiar with. Uh, they form the basis of many, sometimes surprising victories in more complex pawn endgames. We could imagine that the Black King might get mated here. Mm-hmm. And this is actually allowing White to try to win the game. White to play. So Black's pawn is a clear, quick path to A1. He's almost there. Um, and Black's king is holding off these two pretty nicely. Uh, but white wins because of the threat of mate. So king f6, a2. Black could play king d7, which prevents this king from going to e6. But now we can promote with check. King f7, a2, queen with check. And then we can easily go pick up the pawn. However, if you push the pawn, we play king e6. There's no way you can stop mate. Knight, mate. Yeah. Nakamura would promote to a knight. Hey, Poshi. Black won the race but lost the war because it's mate. That's pretty important. All right, so that was a pretty simple example. Let's look at this one here. There. I must send a quick text, but I am paying attention. A text attention. massage. I just need to send one real quick. Texting is important. I wow. try. That's why I always do it when I'm driving. <laughs> All right. Success in many races depends on the knowledge gleaned in the past sections. Our next position is an excellent example of this. So here it is, white to move. This position is lost for white, since his opponent's clearly ahead in the race. It's already almost Queentown. Mm Mm-hmm, definitely. Black needs to be aware of a little trick, though, in order to win this. C5. And now black blunders. DC, double question mark. Washington, DC. Incorrect. An innocent and natural move, but it throws away the victory. Correct was A2, which we'll look at after we analyze DC. Remember, even the most innocent move can have a life and death ramifications in King and Pawn Endgames. That's true. King and Pawn Endgames are very uh, specific, and, and you have to calculate everything completely until you get to a position that you already know is a win or a draw, like how we looked at earlier, mm-hmm. for example. <clears throat> DC, A2, black is winning this race, right? Definitely. But don't you remember about this from last time? We looked at this before, queen against a lone pawn. And if it's a bishop pawn or a rook pawn, it's a draw on the seventh rank. You remember that from before? I do now. Yeah. I did when we first... So this is drawing... Because of the fact that it's a bishop pawn, and it's the only pawn left, uh, this is enough to to force the draw, which we looked at, you know, already. So, 
yeah the end could be for example queen e5 and you can even play king a8 here <laughs> king b7 and then king a8 that's why a rook pawn or a bishop or a rook pawn draws because of stalemate you take the pawn it's stalemate oh that's right in other pawns like if it was all moved over then if he has to go here then you can win by bringing your king up like how we looked at before right yeah. but since it's a bishop pawn we can go to the corner and it's going to be a draw all right so let's say that black doesn't trade the pawns and just plays a2 right see now we're going to win it c6 also hopeless is to take well, queen, and then go here. And now it's not a bishop pawn anymore. It's a, it's a center pawn. So we will win this in the way that we've looked at prior. You know, for example, here, and then uh, here, and then check. Now this move won't work as we take it, and it's not stalemate anymore. Right, yeah. So he'll go here, then we'll step our king up, etc. Mainly, etc. So let's say c6, trying to keep a bishop pawn, mm -hmm. keep that stalemating chance, right? Queen, c7. White has a c pawn, but he can't draw for two reasons. He doesn't have the stalemate anymore because you'll move your pawn. when, Like if I have my queen there and you go over here, I'll take, you still have a move. Oh, yeah. Not stalemate. Mm -hmm. And in some lines, black can just capture the d-pawn, then sacrifice his queen for the last pawn, or let you queen and take it, and then I'll queen with my last pawn. Oh, yeah. So let's take a look. Check. King a8. Now, you don't want to go king a7 and lose this pawn with check. Then it'll be that scenario where I'll just give up my queen for that pawn and, and queen my other pawn and be up a queen. King a8. Check. We'll do the zig and the zag. Classic zig and the zag. <laughs> we need an emote. The zig right. and the zag. <laughs> Actually, place queen b5 check here. Okay. Then he goes here. <laughs> Why did he play queen b5 and then get to this position? I don't understand. Well, anyways. Now it's over because king a8 will take the pawn and king c8 will take here. And again, we can do like we were saying, like we could just go here, let him queen, and then we'll win, obviously, frankly. So remember, you can't solve complex endgames unless you know about the fundamentals. The only way that you would know what to do here with black is you know that a bishop pawn here is going to draw if that's the only thing left. So you know, oh, I shouldn't trade the pawns. I need to keep these pawns here so that I can try to win if he has a bishop pawn and I don't stalemate him. Mm -hmm. Also, in general, you don't want to exchange pawns anyway because that is lowering your chances of winning, like we just talked about earlier on the stream. Yes. I resigned more games than I should have. Yes. <laughs> you always got to try to find those resources, even if... Uh, even if it, it should lose, you know, you, you've got to test your opponent. Make sure they know what they're doing. Yeah. You don't want to lose to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, lose to somebody who knows what they're doing. All right, here's another complex endgame here. Come on, what's going on here? I did it right. All right. white to move and win so the race seems to be pretty even here um, the fact that there are two rook bonds means that both queening squares connect on the long diagonal right and so this is a problem obviously for black because when we queen first okay I made sure it was in mm. fact his turn to move we'll queen first you get to queen also but Mm -hmm. not successful <laughs> yeah hey Roscoe Gilbert haven't seen you here before how's it going however a slight adjustment in King's position can change the position from a loss to a draw 
Let's put the king here. Now white to move only draws. Remember, they're rook pawns. Uh, and as you should know by now, rook pawns stand for results of problems that are strange, odd, annoying, and unfair. Keep this in mind whenever a rook pawn endgame is about to be reached. And now it's going to draw. As we already know, a pawn in the seventh rank is going to draw if it's a rook pawn or a bishop pawn, as we've seen many times. All right, now we'll look at a famous study. <clears throat> White to move. This is a famous study that uh, Richard Reddy made. Mm. I've seen it, you know, dozens and dozens of times. So maybe, uh, maybe if people in the chat Maybe if they don't know about it, they can try to take a whack at it. White mm -hmm. to play. I don't know about it. I think I have seen it, actually. But I don't remember the solution. I think Ben might have shown me this. I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. It's so famous, and it's so easy to set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks like really good for black because uh, obviously black's king is so much better than white's king. Luki Pookie says Ben has definitely shown this before. Mm -hmm. I can uh, I can imagine that. It's tough not to show it. It's so cool. I've seen this too, says somebody. Illegal move in the chat, I like it. That's how, that's how you do it, chat. <laughs> Some illegal moves. Oh, 100 bits from Cy Bradbury. Thanks, Cy. Yay, thank you, Cy. I, for, I forgot everything that Ben shows. It's white to play, Roscoe. And your move's illegal no matter whose turn it is. But it's white to play. What's the point of remembering anything if you're just going to forget it five minutes later? <laughs> <laughs> Classic Futurama quote. I'm trying to learn to type that one in and lose on time. <laughs> Let's see. I don't remember. I don't know. Maybe King G7 has to be first. King G7. Good mm -hmm. idea. And that is the right idea. It walks towards both pawns. Both pawns, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely the, the right defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try uh, H4. Let's see. I think you still have to go king f6. Still walking towards both pawns, mm -hmm. exactly. This gets two squares away from, or three squares away from his own pawn, or two, I guess, really. And then uh, also two away from this pawn. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So you're increasing, or you're decreasing the distance between both of those pawns right. by doing this. Exactly mm -hmm. right. So h3. Um, now is where I can't remember. Uh, 
See, Chad is a... Chad, they don't understand the position. They just try to remember the solution. But mm -hmm. the move that they suggest in Chad is now incorrect because I didn't play the move that that would be the correct answer to. Mm -hmm. I see. Roscoe, that move is still illegal. MG Weirdo, how, that move doesn't make any sense at all. What do you think? Is that for <laughs> real? Um. <laughs> Scottish Demon Ghost. <laughs> <What did he say? laughs> <laughs> the guy this guy keeps suggesting an illegal movement Scottish team and go jokingly suggested it himself <laughs> uh, too funny um, that was a good one all right well they're gonna queen in two moves mm -hmm. um <clears throat> I'm not sure. I don't fully understand it. I guess I would say king e6. King e6. That's absolutely right. Yeah, because now you really got to get your own pawn rolling. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, you got it. So you figured it out. People in the chat, they wanted to play king e5. Mm -hmm. That move makes no sense. Right. You're actually uh, not helping yourself control the square. Mm -hmm. So I'll go here. You could go there and I'll queen. But I'm going to win now. Right. King e5 is the answer if black plays here. Here. Now king e5 is the answer to that one. Still going to protect the pawn and going to take this pawn. Right. So if you take the pawn, I easy draw. Mm -hmm. And if you push here, then I'll go here and then there. And we'll both queen. Or you can do this, and then we'll both queen, but I'll queen with check, so even better for white. Right, yeah. Should draw. <clears throat> but yeah, if they play h3 first, king e5 loses. you got to play king e6 or king e7 yeah, if the king to go didn't... here and, yeah. and yeah. promote. Now, playing c7 first loses, because after king here, I'm threatening to take your pawn. So you don't have time to protect it, and you don't have time to take this. Right. So yeah. this is just bust up. Mm -hmm. So you got to play king e6 now. Or king e7. And uh, either way, that it's going to be a, a draw. For example, here, now we can push. And then we can go here. Or if they go here, we can do this. Or possibly even this mm -hmm. move draws. But, you know, yeah, and if the king right. comes up, yeah, you get to uh, promote with check. Okay. Right. Well, it doesn't even, that doesn't even matter, but, you know. Yeah. Can't hurt to promote with check. <laughs> I like to promote with check. Push him, baby, says DK. That is what Yasser would do. <laughs> King back towards H8 and win, thanks to a number of mouse slips. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say that in the book, but I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was hard. I have seen that before, but I couldn't remember the solution. I wonder where Grandmaster Feingold went. Usually he gets in the chat. All right. Maybe he's uh, getting a car wash. Possible. <laughs> Possible. That seems like something he'd do. Although we just took our cars in for maintenance. and They washed my car, but I don't know if they washed his car. He hopes that they didn't wash his car so he can go get a car wash. <laughs> All right. So hey, here's Juan. another puzzle that's similar, clearly. Um, and so the, the ready... Com composition that we just looked at mm -hmm. was from 1921. So this one was just one year after. This position was 1922 okay. by Adamson. Something's in my eye. Is it mm -hmm. this, the love of chess? <laughs> it's like an eyelash. Anyway, I'm sorry. So what about Adamson? What? Nothing. It's 1922 instead oh, okay. of 1921. Oh, okay. So here, white to move and draw. So very similar. Instead of the pawn running down here, it's running down here. Okay. Don't get confused and think that it's going this way. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And it does get confusing. I'm confused. <laughs> so we'll play the same move. Okay. A4. King F5. 
and a3. If king b6, we'll go king e5, getting ready to protect the pawn. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you take, then I'm in that square. Right. Yeah. We learned about the square. Mm -hmm. So that's going to draw. So a3, but we can do similar with king e6, just like the ready position. And now our pawn's going to queen as well as yours. They're right. both two squares away. Mm -hmm. Just push. Are you queen, I queen, or you can go here and here, and then queen, queen. Right, okay, cool. In fact, this wins for white, doesn't it? No, 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 no. No, it doesn't. If queen here, you have to go like this. This draws. I was looking at this. This loses to check. We have to... Oh, no, you can still play king a7. You Always king a7, yeah. If you went here, then you get skewered. That's what I was afraid of. Okay. Yeah, but this will draw. Similar idea. Here's useful advice. King and pawn endgames are always tricky. If you enter one, even one that seems hopeless, take a long think and try to grasp the position's true meaning. This involves taking into account promotions with check, the square of the pawn, opposition, triangulation, outflanking, and the king's ability to escort its pawn to the eighth rank. Thank you, Juan. He says we look good today. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. That's a, that's rare. For me, at least. No. <laughs> People talk about you being handsome all the time. Yeah, but they're just lying. No. Come on. Come on. They're just like, if we, if we lie to him, he'll keep teaching us chess. <laughs> that's what they're thinking. Devious hey, people. Alan. Yeah, chess is hard. That's why checkers is boring. Checkers is pretty tough. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played it know. when I was a kid. See, so you look great. Oh, thanks, Felipe. 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 Oh, you're right. There's no accents. I don't know. Well, but could be. All versions of this endgame have been already been addressed. A king and pawn versus king and pawn. Um... We talked about uh, the, the, the race that we looked at earlier, the trebuchet from earlier, even even earlier. And uh, yeah, here are a few more examples of king and pawn against pawn. That should firm up the knowledge you already possess. Okay. I heard oh, a noise. Nice. It was uh, GM No Chance Yay! Ever with the donation. Thank you. Five doll hairs. Yeah, nice. we've gotten a lot of... You know, subs and donations today and bits. I'll be right back, and then you just keep talking. I just want to okay. get the eyelash out of my eye. <laughs> okay. So that I can focus a little better. I don't want to do it on the stream because it's kind of gross. Oh, you got it. Right I'll right. just read the chat for a bit. Oh, you keep going. Any checkers GMs will know the best move from start to end. It's all theory to them. Well, I know that uh, checkers has been solved, like, in some way, but not another. Not every single position in ch that can occur in checkers has been solved but if you start from the starting position it, that has been solved oh yeah i got a rick and morty shirt on that's true probably from hot topic they uh they invented rick and morty merchandise there <laughs> not really but you know they've got a ton of it yeah, they do. there are many different variant of checkers though that's true sort of like with chess Okay now. <laughs> Sorry about that. So white to move here is a draw. White will win the d5 pawn, uh, but that's not enough to win the game, as we already know. Here. And we had talked about this before. All we got to do is be next to the d7 square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long as we're next to that square, once he takes, then we'll go there opposition and draw. Okay. So either of these moves draw. Like here, for example. Just don't play king d7. And then take. Now white has opposition. Oh, yeah. Black steps to the side and white wins by stepping up and queening. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty easy stuff there. Now let's look at a position that looks better than this one for black, but it's not. 
surprisingly, because of the pawn's placement. This one looks like black's got it under control, but white to move here is going to win this time. Well, you just use some classic outflanking. Bloop. We did it. We outflanked him, just like we learned earlier. And the problem here is that, okay, we can let you take and get opposition, but our king's on the sixth rank. Yeah, too late. Too late to order fries. We'll step either way and wins. Yeah, if this was all pushed back a, a rank, then it would be a draw still after king d8. Mm -hmm. But because of the situation, was, the pawn was captured on the sixth rank. It's not enough to get opposition, as we already know. So these are just basic king and pawn versus king endgame theory, but knowledge of them allows us to solve positions that would be unintelligible otherwise. Uh, okay, let's read some stuff. All right, so this position takes things a bit further, this next one. Let's go put the king here and there and put some pawns on the board. Okay. We'll put some markings, because that's what he does. Oops, there we go. All right, the position in this diagram takes things a bit further. To fully understand it, you have to use the tools from the first two examples that we just looked at, plus all of your opposition skills. Do said skills pay the bills? This kind of rule, this kind of situation where the defender must give up his pawn but can take the opposition is always a draw unless the white pawn is on the fifth rank like it is here. Mm -hmm. And the, like how we, we just saw that in the previous examples. Yeah. So since white's pawn's in the fifth rank, he knows he'll win if he can take the, the black pawn on, on d6. Black's only hope is to keep the white king from penetrating to e6, f6, or g6. That's the what we highlighted there. So we can't let the opponent get into those squares. So, okay. So if it's white's turn, white to move wins by playing king g5. Now we're threatening to go into two of those three highlighted squares. So, you know, you can't go here because then we'll go there. All right. And then we're going to win by outflanking like we just saw. Mm -hmm. If you go here to stop me, then we get opposition. And again, you're allowing me into one of these two squares no matter what you do now. And that'll win by outflanking again. Useful advice if you're the defender. Before allowing a position of this nature to occur, make sure the opponent can't penetrate with the king. If he can, make sure his pawn isn't on the fifth rank. And you could take opposition when he captures your pawn. After he captures your pawn. So black to move can successfully draw this position. What do you think? What's the drawing move going to be? Let's see. <laughs> Lazo, I think you still do have the skills to figure that out. What's he say? He uh, said he missed the first two examples. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're hard. That's right, true. So black see. to play. How do you uh All right, let me stave look. off the let me look. the penetrada? Jeremy Silman says I do not have the skills. <laughs> yes. Tough. Great suggestion, MG Weirdo, if only it was legal. But that would be a good move. Maybe. Actually, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, that, that would work if it was legal. It looks like chat uh, mostly is correct. Mostly. If only it was bug house. What are the chances that a, a bug house game gets the, to this position? <laughs> Zero percent, right? You you never will have king and pawn against king and pawn in bug house. Couldn't you do uh, like the distant officer, like king f eight? 
that's the only way. Yes, you mm -hmm. have to play distant opposition here, king f8. Exactly what right. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, king f8 is the way to go, yes. Mm -hmm. If you play a move like was suggested in the chat, king f7, I didn't make it black to, to play, king f7, then king f5, white has opposition, and then we'll infiltrate whichever way you move, and, well, okay, we'll, we'll shoulder you out here. Mm -hmm. or what did he call it? Outflanking. Yeah, outflanking. Yeah. Divoretsky calls it shouldering. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've heard that. Now, king e7 also isn't going to work because I can do this mm -hmm. diagonal opposition. And I'm threatening to go here to outflank you. Once right. you stop me, I, we have seen this position four or five times already. So you have to play king f8, distant opposition. Look at me. I see I came with the terminology nice. yes. and everything. <laughs> yes, and, and you saw and you conquered. Um, so, obviously, if you step up here, we'll keep the opposition. And if you step up this way, we'll keep the opposition this way. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, you could try to play some tricky moves, we can always just keep the distant opposition. Hey, Guccio fan one. So that's actually all there is to this one. Yeah. So let's look at also pretty similar position. Take these guys down. There we go. All right, so white to move. So this position looks pretty tough for white. Yeah, this looks harder. Because <laughs> the king is uh, better for black than white. Yeah. And the pawn is better for black than white. And that's all that's on the board is one king and one pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's clear that black will win the a2 pawn. You can't stop me. Right. It's white to play, but yeah, you yeah. can't stop me from going here and taking it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's too bad. But white can draw if he reaches the c2 square. So what you need to do is your king is, uh, like black's king is here, mm -hmm. and your king is has to be here. Right. Only yeah. possible square, or I guess here. But, okay, they can't get there because it's too far away. But anyways, then after you take, we play king c2. Right. So with that in mind, Stop. it's actually pretty obvious what the move is to draw here. You only got two legal moves. It's going to be king h8, double x clam. This seems very odd, um, but it makes perfect sense when you look at it the way that you know we were just describing it. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to f8 allows king f6. When black has gotten closer to his goal on a th a2, he says a3. It's a2, right? Black's gotten closer to his goal on a2. Probably just a misprint. Still. Uh, but white hasn't gotten closer to c2, actually. For example, uh, we'll play like king e8. We can even just go here. We don't have to keep doing opposition. Just make sure I play the same moves here. So you need to be here right now. Okay, yeah. And then takes king c2, but you're too far away. And then we win. Mm -hmm. So king h8, this is going to work, though. Now, sure, he can go king h6, but then he's not getting closer to a2. So let's try to run it, run it in there. King f5, king g7, king... Plays g6. Okay. Probably they should both work. And now see, we are here where we need it to be. And draw. Stalemate. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice example. Yeah, though. that's crazy. I never, you know, would have thought you had to backtrack to right to get where you want to go 